Hello everyone. Thank you for taking the time to watch our presentation on HTC Corporation presented by Felix Figueroa, George Odisho, William Wiseman, and myself, Christy Harvey. HTC, formerly known as High Tech Computer Corporation, is a Taiwanese manufacturer of mobile devices, smartphones, and tablets, and was founded in May 1997 by Chir Wang and H.T. Cho. Peter Cho, a talented engineer, joined shortly after. The company is based in Taiwan County, Taiwan, and as the company began to see success and make big impacts to the mobile device and smartphone industry, the company later became known as Quietly Brilliant. Let's discuss some facts about the case. In the beginning, the company got off to a rocky start. It seemed like one problem led to another, which involved high production costs, technical glitches, and lack of brand recognition. It was Wang's belief that, as a woman, it's very important to carry things light. Everything has to be in the device. So in 1997, Wang was presented with an opportunity to work with Microsoft, who had recently developed Windows CE, a new platform that could run on smaller PC devices. The goal was to try and make a portable gadget. With the help of Peter Cho, they were able to create the world's first Microsoft pocket-sized PC within a year's time. HTC found their stride in the design and manufacturing of smart handheld devices, such as PDAs, smartphones, and other related components. In 2000, they also developed the iPack, a PDA that HTC engineered and designed for compact computer. 80% of the company's revenue came from the sale of PDAs, but they were faced with increased competition. So the company had to make strategic changes in order to keep their competitive advantage. One of those changes was to make the shift from PDAs to wireless devices. So in 2002, the company designed and manufactured a Windows-based smartphone. By 2011, they were considered Asia's second largest handset manufacturer, ranking within the top five of the smartphone manufacturers in the world. The company had also been recognized as being one of the 50 most innovative companies, and they were also able to grab a large part of the market share. By 2011, HTC reflected a revenue of more than 15 million. However, each of these triumphs did not come without its challenges. So by year 2012, competition was rapidly increasing, HTC's revenue had dropped by 35%, and operating income saw a 70% decline. HTC was involved in a patent infringement dispute with Apple, and HTC's two main operating system suppliers, Google and Microsoft, were allied with competitors. This proved to be a pivotal time for HTC. The company had to decide what their next step should be. Peter Chow believed, if you really want to capture the value of innovation, you must have brand identity. Our objectives of this, of this case is to evaluate the company's performance up to the time of the case. In doing so, we will be able to answer the following questions. What were its competitive strengths and weaknesses? At the time of the case, was HTC's competitive position sustainable? What were the main challenges HTC faced and how did those challenges affect HTC's competitive position? To help us answer those questions and determine what the right strategy should be, our group has developed a roadmap. We will first look at the general environment. Our focus will be on the technological and legal trends, as this will help us give a general idea of what the industry looks like. Then we will go over the industry analysis, 
to discuss each of Porter's five forces in order to make a determination about the company's attractiveness in the industry. We will also perform an internal analysis so we can examine the internal environment within the company. And finally, we will complete a SWOT analysis so we can gain a better understanding of the company's strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Based on our analysis, we will complete a strategy formulation where we will, where we will review and analyze three strategic alternatives. Out of the three, we will select one that our group believes the company should take in order to gain brand identity and find success again in the industry. Last, we will close with our conclusion that will serve as a recap of the case and provide a final recommendation for what HTC strategic decisions should be. As part of the general environmental analysis, our focus will be directed toward the technological and legal trends within the industry. Technology was evolving and growing at a very rapid pace. Technological evolution could be found in three distinct areas, mobile devices to smartphones, operating systems, and other competitors. In the early 90s, the upward trend could be seen in the development of the mobile device. The mobile device industry had saturated the market due to increases in competition, wider service coverages, technological innovation, and lower prices. In developing countries, mobile phones made communications accessible and affordable. In more advanced countries, phones were becoming more of a stylish accessory with user-friendly features such as slide-out keyboards to make texting easier. It didn't take much longer for mobile phones to shift from a thing to want to what had become a perceived necessity. In the 2000s, the industry began to see a shift in what consumers expected from their phones. Instead of simply having, mobile, having a mobile device, consumers wanted a smartphone, a phone that could offer better productivity tools, such as being able to access and deliver email in real time. Consumers also wanted, wanted access to high-speed internet that enabled fast wireless data downloads with constant connectivity. In 2007, Apple introduced the iPhone to the world, and this proved to be a game changer. The iPhone became the industry benchmark for smartphones. The iPhone was known for its content offerings and ecosystem, which included music, documents, ebooks, and photos. It also served as a gateway for third-party developers to write apps and maximize their reach to consumers. As of September 2011, 18 billion downloads had been made from a selection of over 500,000 apps. Apple also released the iCloud to help users sync other Apple devices such as their MacBook, iPod, iPhone, and iPad. Overall, Apple iOS increased from 2.7 of the market share in 2007 to 15% in 2011. In contrast, Google debuted Google's Android in 2008. It was free and open for customization, which allowed device manufacturers to modify Android according to their needs. As the number of Android phone sales increased, developers saw a market potentially larger than Apple with fewer restrictions. In quarter three of 2011, it was estimated that more than 700,000 Android devices were activated every day. The release of Google's Android did not come without its challenges. Fragmentation emerged as a key concern. Fragmentation caused problems for developers who would end up releasing apps that ran on outdated software. As a result, Google implemented an Android update released in October 2011 to run on both tablets and smartphones. It was called the Ice Cream Sandwich and this was intended to offer a one-size-fits-all approach for different screen sizes. For all of its challenges, Google's Android saw the fastest growth and managed to acquire 52.5% of the total market share by September 2011. Other, 
Other competitors included Microsoft Windows Phone, Samsung Electronics, RIM's BlackBerry OS, LG Electronics, and Motorola Mobility. Most of the noted companies saw decline in their smartphone sales, with the exception of Samsung. Although they weren't first to market, in 2011, Samsung made a huge impact with the introduction of the Android phone, the Galaxy S2. Samsung broke its own sales record by reaching 10 million units within five months. The Galaxy S2 set itself apart by offering one of the lightest and brightest smartphones. Legal trends. Legal trends and their related impacts play a huge factor in the growth potential for each of the companies. By 2012, intellectual property had become a battle between companies when it came to smartphones. Apple led the charge for aggressive litigations against makers of Android devices. This included HTC and then Samsung. Since HTC was partnered with Google, it bore the brunt of Apple's aggressiveness. Microsoft entered into negotiations with both Samsung and HTC, claiming that they infringed on its patents related to mobile phones. These patent wars proved to be expensive and time-consuming. All of these things collectively have influenced the direction of technology as it relates to mobile, mobile and smartphone devices, iOS platforms, and intellectual property. This portion of the presentation will include an industry analysis utilizing Porter's five forces. The five forces include HTC's rivalries, any threat of new entrants, any power of buyers, power of suppliers, along with the threat of any substitutes. There are a number of rivals HTC needs to be concerned about in this industry. The competitiveness of the rivals continued to shift through the years as technologies advanced. The rivals consisted of the following, Apple's op, iOS system, Google's Android, Microsoft's Windows Phone, RIM's BlackBerry operating system, Nokia, Samsung Electronics, along with other various small competitors. The rivals shifted throughout HTC's existence when it went from a company that supplied user interfaces to a company that began to build its own smartphones. When this took place, the company created rivalries from some of its previous partnerships. The Board of Operations feared this would occur, but the corporate leaders of the company persuaded those individuals to take a risk anyways. Threat of New Entrance At this point, the threat of new entrance is highly unlikely. Many of the consumers who are buying these products will be brand loyal going forward. Our team finds it highly unlikely for a new entrant to come in with the ability to compete in this crowded industry. The companies currently operating already established their user interfaces, technological advancements, product placement, along with creating applications that are catering towards the consumers. This takes years to develop. The competition HTC faces comes with difficult challenges from the likes of Apple, Google, Nokia, and Samsung. Samsung began to blossom into the, one of the industry's leaders, but it had already established itself in other areas of the electronic industry prior to its surgeons. Power of Buyers The buyers in this industry possess the power to make or break all the companies competing in this industry. Companies including Apple, Google, HTC, Nokia, and Samsung all offer similar products which include smartphones and tablets, that customers have familiarized themselves with forming a com comfort level. The technological advancements each company contributes to the market create a strong brand for its loyal customers. The case provides high percentages from surveys where customers show they are willing to buy the devices again according to their preference. Price wars are not so much of a concern in this market since service providers offer similar deals in relation to comparable products. This would be one of the main reasons why buyers obtain high bargaining power compared to other industries. 
Power of Suppliers Suppliers in this industry do not fare well with any bargaining power. The competitiveness between companies creates such a high demand it makes it difficult for suppliers to push back in any way. If one supplier cannot meet the expectation from the likes of industry giants, the companies will easily find other alternatives to replace them. Apple, Google, HTC, Nokia, and Samsung produce at such a high demand they are unable to afford any delays or manufacturing defects. The competitiveness requires these companies to react quickly, giving suppliers limited power. We would imagine the options for replacements is high with companies waiting to take on a business partnership that could potentially send its profitability to a level on many only wish they could achieve. Threat of Substitutes Our team believes the threat of substitutes follows closely with the threat of new entrants, which is very unlikely. A large reasoning for this would include many of the patent infringement issues each company is facing. The products are similar to the point where each company basically utilizes concepts from its rival competitors. HTC was forced to pay royalties to Windows for its patent infringement. It was also forced to eliminate a part from many of its devices when courts ruled it had infringed on one of ten patents Apple claimed it stole. Taking all this into consideration would make it difficult to believe a new competitor can enter the industry without following similar footsteps. Another difficult obstacle to overcome would include the brand customers have familiarized themselves with throughout the recent years of product rivalries. An internal analysis shows us how HTC is different from other companies. HTC has strong people, product, and partnerships, and these give the company a unique approach to the market. First, HTC has a strong executive leadership team. H.T. Chow and Chair Wang are the founders. Chow is an engineer, and uh, Wang comes from a, uh, a, a well-known business family. And um, Wang was actually identified uh, by Forbes magazine as one of the top 20 world's most powerful women in 2011. And Peter Chow, who was uh, appointed a CEO, is also a standout executive who has an uh, aggressive approach to uh, leading enthusiastically from the top down. So uh, the engineers um, are also credited by the executives as some of the industry industry's best. And so we recommend uh, an investment into the marketing team because this will help HTC grow its brand recognition. Um, HTC has been creating products since uh, 1998 and they uh, have been innovative with creating custom product offerings for mobile service providers. Uh, that's been their competitive advantage. So they're developing a strategy for self-branded handsets in the future because this will help them um, with, uh, with standout brand recognition. So that's an opportunity as well as opportunities uh, with software and um, other uh, operating system new, uh, new product introductions. HTC has uh, strategic partnerships with other large tech companies and um, that's added to their competitive advantage. It fills a unique gap in the smartphone marketplace because some of these other companies don't have the, um, the hardware capabilities that HTC can provide. So this is how HTC competes with Apple's iPhone and the Samsung Galaxy smartphones, who are the other leading uh, smartphone platforms. Um, licensing the operating systems with Google and Microsoft can be expensive. So we think that HTC must develop a long-term strategy that does not require dependencies in their partnerships. For the SWOT analysis, we'll look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, first, for strengths, um, we think that the company has great leadership. Um, the founders and Peter Chow um, work really well together. There is collaboration within the company and uh, with, its, with its partners. Um, that's, uh, that's an opportunity for future growth and innovation. Simply put, they have so many success stories, including the first uh, pocket-sized pocket PC with Microsoft in 1998, the iPad in 2000, the Trio smartphone, um, and the first Windows-based smartphone in 2002. So innovation is, is um, a strong strength for HTC. Um, there are several weaknesses that the company must uh, keep their eye on. 
for the brand, uh, HTC has been successful in providing handsets, but they haven't been very successful branding their handsets um, to the consumer market. So um, that's one area that the that the leadership has already identified and is working on a strategy to address. Lean manufacturing is a is a difficulty for the company. Um, we put it here as a weakness because they. Um, the company, if they were to reduce the number of mo of product offerings, um, right now they have about 50 different phone models, and um, those have an average product life cycle of nine months. So the highly customizable approach creates uh, a lot of additional cost. So a, a leaner manufacturing approach can take advantage of economies of scale for the supply chain. And um, the market share is an issue for for HTC at the moment, they've been losing share between the years of 2010 and 2012 to Samsung and, and Apple. And so um, a new strategy must must be addressed and implemented to reverse that trend. There are a lot of opportunities in the, in the, in the um, smartphone industry. Uh, the engineering team is capable of building a proprietary operating system if they need to, but um, it's not the direction that the leadership is taking the company because they want to leverage their partnerships. So it is an opportunity that they could implement in the future. Um, for a differentiation, um, the Hero smartphones have been widely popular. And so that's, a, that's an opportunity for HTC to continue to introduce um, Hero handsets and uh, maybe provide those handsets for other businesses that also want their own flagship uh, handset and tablets. Tablets is still somewhat of a new technology. Um, there, people are finding new applications in the consumer market. So if HTC can design a new er ergonomic uh, use for tablets, then HTC could uh, could become a, uh, a leading uh, manufacturer in that space. And for threats, uh, patent infringements have have been an issue. Um, you know, in in legal claims with Apple over um, patent infringements. And uh, it's an issue that the executives cannot ignore because it not only is it, is it expensive, but it demonstrates bad uh, negative PR. Uh, product recalls uh, are a threat for the company. Um, there there's, have been no product recalls um, so far for HTC as of this case, but um, product testing and research can reduce the threat of product recalls for HTC and lost partnerships. This has been a huge competitive advantage for the company. Um, if they were to lose the exclusive partnerships that they've established with Microsoft and Google in the past, um, then, uh, then that would create a significant loss of, of revenue stream for the company. We will continue by formulating a strategy to address some of the concerns HTC is dealing with. HTC has the ability to choose among a variety of strategies moving forward. Looking at the various competitors and diving into what makes them unique and what makes them successful has led to the formulation of three possible strategies that will ultimately discuss the topics of differentiation, the response to Microsoft and Google, the tablet market, and intellectual property wars. For the first strategy, HTC can continue to differentiate themselves by focusing on the user experience rather than hardware. HTC can continue to drive product market innovation by their focus on the software side. HTC should not necessarily be overly concerned with Microsoft and Google strategy. Both of their potential partners have acquired aging companies in Nokia and Motorola respectively. These companies have lacked innovation in recent years and have seen a major decline in users, especially considering the push toward touchscreen technology versus a physical keyboard. In order to increase brand awareness, HTC should consider both a focus on the Asian other market and the introduction of a HTC tablet. HTC is headquartered in Taiwan yet have less than 20% of their revenue share from the Asian other market. This screams potential opportunity and focusing on their own home region could help boost revenue. In respect to the tablet market, HTC should enter the market while taking a page out of Amazon's playbook. Creating an underlying UI is what made Amazon's Kindle Fire seem unique in the tablet market and led to a wide variety of success for the company. Partnering with Amazon to use its UI in an HTC phone could be a good idea, but in this strategy we will focus solely on HTC developing their own UI and developing their own hardware. 
Lastly, as far as intellectual property is concerned, HTC can feel less attacked by continuing to innovate versus following the next trend. This will limit its exposure to potential suits. For the second strategy, HTC should not focus, should not focus on the tablet market and instead focus on slimming down their lineup of phones. HTC should also develop and use their own proprietary software along with their innovative hardware to increase market share. While this approach will be risky, it will help drive the it will help drive the global brand awareness of HTC. The only concern is that HTC might fall into the BlackBerry mold, which is losing market share in the mobile segment. For the third strategy, this strategy will use a combination of the two others, but with a subtle yet defining twist. HTC can focus on the user experience by partnering with Amazon's Android-based UI. This will allow HTC to improve the user experience while giving Amazon the ability to subtly enter the mobile segment through the partnership of their Android-based UI with HTC's innovative and historically powerful hardware. HTC will then partner with Amazon to improve the hardware to the Kindle Fire. Amazon's hardware can be instantly dramatically improved due to HTC's experience developing similar hardware, albeit in a smaller form. This would give HTC the customized experience they hope to give to the consumer and allow them to enter the tablet market with a company that has significant brand awareness. Giving users the ability to use Prime to access their books, shows, and movies on an HTC device will give HTC a competitive advantage over Samsung, who will be using a UI that is still Android, but with a much less user-defined or, cus user or customizable UI and a significant threat in the HTC hardware. The things working in HTC's favor are high brand loyalty compared to Samsung with the NPS score of 44% versus Samsung's NPS of 36%. Also, consumers are more likely to repurchase HTC products at 62% versus Samsung's 51%. Overall satisfaction is also considerably higher at 80% for Samsung, 80% for HTC versus Samsung 75%. The value for the money is actually the highest for HTC versus Apple, BlackBerry, and Samsung. HTC needs to only improve on global brand awareness to push sales, and introducing products that incorporate the Amazon ecosystem could help drive brand recognition for HTC. For these reasons, the third strategy will be chosen for HTC due to it resolving many of the issues that HTC has had to deal with. HTC will instantly gain access to the tablet market. It will also be less prone to lawsuits since the UI will respond differently to the hardware versus other Android and Apple products, and companies may be less prone to suing a company that has ties to the powerhouse that is Amazon. While HTC does, not want, does want to increase brand awareness, it will be difficult to compete with juggernauts like Samsung and LG that provide a similar experience and have a whole host of other assets in the technology market that drive brand name recognition. HTC should instead focus on piggybacking off of the Amazon brand name to push its product. Having access to Amazon's ecosystem could help HTC use the Amazon name as a marketing platform that will prove to be successful for both companies. HTC can continue to differentiate and drive product or market innovation by pursuing this approach. Microsoft and Google are both interested in the hardware market with the acquisitions of Motorola and Nokia, but both are software companies and acquiring aging companies to help make a push for their own proprietary hardware could take longer than HTC and Amazon's co-investment approach. HTC is also headquartered in Taiwan and have less than 20% of their shares from the Asian other market. A focus on this market through HTC's own home region assets could help increase market and revenue share for HTC. Another reason why HTC should consider the, consider the partnership with Amazon besides the improved market, marketability is that Android currently has no licensing fee, which will result in a cost savings for HTC versus using Windows software. The Android system has shown to be customizable through Amazon's uniquely customized UI in the Kindle Fire. Using a proprietor, proprietary OS has its benefits, mostly due to customization, but R&D will be high and time is of the essence in the mobile tablet market. HTC focusing on only hardware and functionality, much like Samsung and LG, is an ideal approach. Android should be the focus of its OS approach as competitors have found success using it. From 2010 to 2011, 
there was a rather drastic decrease for smartphone sales to end users by OS as a percent of total market share. The only major OS that did not see a decrease was Android, which saw a significant increase from 22.7% of total market share compared to 52.5% of total market share. Also, competitors like Apple and Samsung are increasing total revenue, while Nokia continues to see a decrease in total revenue. This may be a sign that HTC should focus more on Samsung as a direct competitor, considering their rise in the mobile market versus Nokia, who looks like they're losing market share and now revenue share. Focusing on what Apple and Samsung are doing should increase the revenue for HTC and Amazon. In order for HTC to avoid infringing on patents, it should only focus on innovative hardware rather than software and or existing hardware. Amazon can help take pressure off of HTC as it is closer to the software side and the customized UI. HTC can also lend its own software knowledge to a more customized experience that Amazon can adopt in future iterations of the Kindle Fire lineup. At the time of this case, HTC's position was actually not sustainable. HTC was facing larger companies as competitors since it was trying to drive brand name recognition or awareness against companies that had a larger scale of products, primarily Samsung and LG, since Apple had an entirely different ecosystem. HTC saw companies similar in size bought out by larger software companies. As a result, HTC's competitive position is declining. In order to jumpstart HTC and for HTC to remain relevant in the mobile market, it should be mentioned that HTC's partnership with Amazon can potentially become a buyout of HTC by Amazon. HTC is a similar company to Nokia and Motorola in terms of scale in what they offer product-wise, and a buyout is an option if a partnership can't be achieved. HTC's, HTC's size in comparison to a company like Amazon actually makes sense in terms of an acquisition, and Amazon entering the mobile market to compete with Apple by having its own ecosystem could actually give Apple a run for its money while pushing the Android platform even further. The action plan is quite simple as HTC's options are rather slim to none. HTC will form a partnership with Amazon, citing the reason for the partnership, the use of Amazon's ecosystem, while providing Amazon the hardware it needs to improve the mixed reviews it received for the Kindle Fire. Amazon will then give HTC access to its UI, while HTC is given the ability to further allow user customization. HTC will use the Android-based Amazon UI in its mobile and tablet hardware. HTC and Amazon will co-conduct customer service checks to ensure customer satisfaction in regard to the usability of the HTC-based Kindle Fire and HTC-based Kindle Phone. HTC and Amazon will co-release the Kindle Fire and Kindle Phone in a swooping marketing campaign targeting a younger, more interested in customization audience that is invested in the Amazon ecosystem or those interested in investing in the, in the Amazon ecosystem. New iterations of the products will arrive yearly to coincide with Apple and Samsung releases, and the focus will be on these two different products rather than focusing on a multitude of phone and tablet options. A disclaimer, if you will, is that if this partnership were to become an acquisition of HTC by Amazon, none of these action items will change other than the use of the HTC, HTC name will most likely cease to exist. A partnership... <coughs> A uh, partnership keeps the brand name alive and increases brand awareness, which is the hope of the strategy. In regard to being bold, it is highly advisable that Amazon purchases HTC. To summarize why this strategy was chosen would be to look at the issues we originally discussed. Differentiation from the current market is addressed by Amazon's UI and HTC's innovation. In responding to Microsoft and Google, HTC sees their acquisitions of competitors as a direct threat to the sustainability of its business, which leads to the formation of a partnership with Amazon. The tablet market is instantly addressed due to Amazon's already successful Kindle Fire, and the intellectual property issue is addressed due to the asset that is Amazon and the fear of other companies suing such a company that is responsible for a percent of their sales in the other assets they own. This creates a dilemma for other companies, which should be the goal of HTC. Conclusion 
It is clear to see HTC faces some difficult challenges as they continue to operate in this competitive consumer-based industry. The risk of entering the, in the industry creating its own brand instead of providing products for its competitors proved to be problematic as HTC continued to compete with companies like Apple, Google, and Samsung. The companies ta tasked to create a brand that gave consumers options making their PC operable mobile devices customizable somewhat separated itself from rival competitors. However, each consumer has a preference and its competitors created products that made them brand loyal to their devices. Some of the difficult challenges involve litigation issues brought on by two of the company's largest competitors. Unfortunately, HTC was not able to avoid one of its lawsuits when it was forced to pay Microsoft royalty fees for its patent infringements. The other lawsuit derived from Apple when the company expressed its concerns of HTC utilizing an intellectual property for its products stolen from Apple. Fortunately for HTC, the courts provided the company with the opportunity of discontinuing the use of the property without any further repercussions. Our team believes HTC can potentially face difficult challenges if they do not create their own operating system. Currently, the leaders of the company do not find it necessary to take on the responsibility. However, this strategy may backfire. It gives its current suppliers leverage in any future price negotiations. The company prides itself with creating a phone that offers a variety of user customization packages. It could create an operating system that continues this approach. Doing this also eliminates any need to depend on its rivals supplying these operating systems as well. In the end, understand it is likely it is highly unlikely for HTC to take on this approach since the company leaders do not support this corporate strategy. Instead, we believe HTC should push hard to take control of the tablet industry. It should continue using the Android operating system while continuing its approach on providing customers with the ability to customize their products to better suit their business and personal needs. If HTC is successful, it may be able to target the younger generation who are not considered age-appropriate for mobile devices. Once the younger generation familiarizes itself with HTC products at a young age, they may be inclined to purchase mobile devices similar to those they use once they become of age. This strategy could impact the brand loyalty of its customer, consumers in a positive way, creating a positive correlation with an increase in mobile devices purchased in the future.